What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, obviously by the title, we're going to talk about Z1 Motorsports brake cooling system. And I have to say, I'm a little bit disappointed. So obviously, again, by the title, you know that this is another must watch before you buy video. So here it is. I, I really want to treat this video how I normally do on the uh, watch before you buy series. Uh, I want to go over, you know, what the product actually is, uh, what it's supposed to do, what the claims are in terms of performance, and then go into whether or not that thing actually performs like they say it does. Uh, whether it's worth it or not, and uh, whether or not I recommend this particular product. And again, we're talking about the Z1 Motorsports uh, Q50 G37 370Z front brake cooling system. So what is it? Just for convenience sake, I'm going to pull it up here on my phone so you can take a look at it. Um, it is about $250. We see that right off the bat. Uh, it consists of a couple of lengths of hose. I'm not sure how long it is or if they even say... Uh, we do know that it's two and a half inch inlet. We can see that right there, uh, which is good. Uh, it should bring in a bunch of air. They do say it is track tested. Uh, but this is again what it consists of, a couple of lengths of tubing. Uh, it's like a silicone kind of rubberized tube with a coil in it so it doesn't collapse on itself. Um, four clamps and these, um, you know, fabricated uh, brackets, mounting plates uh, with the collar right there that you would clamp the hose onto. So it's pretty convenient design. Uh, you can see again the, the collar there that allows you to clamp that uh, hose to and it directs the cool air from the front of the car right into the back of the brake rotor. And here's a gander here. By the picture you can assume that you would be removing your dust shields and replacing it with this uh, little setup here. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of work to install. That's something you got to keep in mind. I don't know if you want to be able to, if you are able to tackle something like this on your own, uh, but it is a cool little feature. And, uh, you know, in theory, it looks like it should work. Now let's, let's talk about that theory a little bit. Go we'll take a look at a brake rotor so we can kind of visualize this. There's some drilled and slotted rotors. Uh, these are the non-sport rotors that I had on the car before. We'll take a look at the front because again, this is a front kit. Now, a lot of people don't really understand or are not familiar with how brake cooling works. Um, if you've ever changed your brake rotors, you're probably familiar with the fins here between the two uh, sandwich pieces of the rotor. Uh, some rotors come directional. These R1 concepts are not. Um, so that means the the fins are just straight. They're kind of at a 90 degree angle. They're, they run adjacent to uh, the, the front of the plate or the front of the rotor. Uh, the directional ones come at a slant, uh, you know, for cooling purposes. But this, the fins themselves is not what cools the rotor. A lot of people think as the, the rotor spins, you know, the, the fins grab the air and, you know, pull the air in and cool the rotor that way. But that's actually not the case. Uh, the way these brake cooling systems work and the way that rotors work uh, in terms of their cooling happens all in the back, the back center portion. Uh, you can watch some videos on YouTube that show some really cool demonstrations. Uh, they will direct smoke to the back of the rotor and as the rotor spins at high speeds it shoots that smoke out so it flashes like this and it sprays out all of the fins you know, 360 degrees around the rotor, and that's where the cooling comes from. So how this brake system works, you could see, uh, you know, your your hub is here, the front of the car is this way, uh, it's the tube, I'm trying to balance this, the uh, tube comes from the front of the car here, directing that cold air from your front bumper, turns it around behind that plate, and sends the cool air directly to the back of the rotor, which then, as it spins, it draws all that cool air out across all of these fins. It dissipates that heat that is generated from your braking system. Uh, it helps uh, dissipate that the brake dust and the brake gases that build up between the pad and the rotor, um, which ends up causing brake fade, uh, you know, in combination with the overall overheating of the rotor in your braking system. And, uh, you know, that's how it works. So the your rotors are designed to, you know, send that cool air from the back or send that cool air through the rotor and 
you know, cool down the fins and all of that stuff. Uh, but it can only handle so much, uh, especially like your factory rotors. And that's why you can move up to the drilled rotors or the slotted rotors or the combination drilled and slotted rotors. And that's why you see some of these really high performance cars with, you know, factory brake ducting systems. If you've ever watched some of those, you know, road races with super high performance cars as the, as the sun sets behind the horizon and the sky gets a little bit darker, you can actually see those brake rotors glowing. Uh, it gets so hot. Uh, and I experienced this firsthand uh, on Tale of the Dragon. I was actually really, really surprised how the non-sport brakes held up. Uh, a lot of people will talk crap about the baby brakes uh, and say you absolutely have to upgrade to the big brakes, which we did. Uh, but again, I was super impressed on Tale of the Dragon. Uh, we did have stainless steel brake lines. We did have Motul.5.1, the high heat uh, brake fluid. And we did have the R1 Concepts drilled and slotted rotor. So, uh, they, and we had upgraded brake pads. So, you know, the drilled and slotted rotors did what they could uh, in terms of dissipating heat and dissipating those, that brake gases and the brake dust and stuff that builds up under heavy braking situations. Uh, but after three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back really hard passes uh, down tail of the Dragon, they did get hot and we did experience a little bit of brake fade for a short time. Um, but again, super impressed with those small brakes. But now, now that we have the big brakes, I can only imagine how much better the braking system will perform, uh, let alone how well it perf will perform once we add this cooling setup to it. Uh, I think if we would have had the cooling setup installed with the baby brakes, uh, I, I think it would have resisted brake fade a little bit better even still. Uh, I don't even know that we would have necessarily experienced brake fade had we been able to direct some of that cold air from the front of the car and really cool those rotors down. Uh, but nonetheless, we've upgraded the system completely now, and um, I think uh, co adding a cooling setup will be will be huge, and it'll perform exponentially better. Now, this cooling system is for the front brakes uh, because you know what, 75, 80 percent of all of the braking happens in the front. When you're entering corners at high speeds and you hit the brakes, weight transfer moves everything toward the front. Uh, so all of the you know, essentially a vast majority of the weight from the car moves to the front end, which is why the front brakes are so important. And you'll see it in motorcycles too. They have the larger rotor, they have the larger caliper. Uh, and here, even with the sport brakes, you can see how large the front rotor is uh, and the big dual piston caliper up front. And then you move to the back, the braking surface of the rotor is much smaller. The caliper itself is very small uh, com in comparison to the front. Um, so that's why the focus of the brake cooling is just for the front wheels for this setup. I'm sure, you know, there's other high performance cars out there that cool the rear brakes as well. Um, but in a Q50 situation, we're probably not going to be uh, experiencing uh, driving situations like that to where we have to worry about cooling the rears. Uh, this is the priority here. But man, those, those look good. That blue looks sick. I'm probably getting a little ahead of myself in comparison to other watch before you buy videos, but uh, I think you can probably tell how I feel about the brake cooling system. Uh, I, I think it's a, it's a good thing. I think it's a good thing, but I should probably tell you why I said at the beginning of the video uh, that I was a little bit disappointed when I saw this come across, or why my, my heart sank when I saw that Z1 was now offering this, this package. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not disappointed or, uh, or upset that Z1 came out with a package. I'm disappointed that now that they've come out with it and announced it, a bunch of you are going to get this installed before me. Um, I was planning on doing a system like this before I even installed the big, big brake kit. That was something I had thought about after experiencing brake fade on Tail of the Dragon. I had started doing some research uh, when I installed the big brake kit and I had uh, kind of the front end of the car exposed a little bit and and especially when I installed the sequential front signals and I got a really close look at the backside of the front bumper um, I started compiling some of the components on my own and you can find everything you would need for a brake cooling system you know on Amazon essentially 
And there are a ton of videos on YouTube of showing people doing their own custom personalized brake cooling setup. Um, you can find inlet ducts of different shapes, round, square, tapered, uh, on Amazon or eBay or other websites, carbon fiber, plastic, metal. They're out there uh, and they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, you can find the same hose, the same tubing that Z1 offers. Uh, and you can find uh, other collars and things that people will modify their dust shields and rivet those collars to it. Uh, you can mount that hose right to it, you know, with uh, some hose clamps. Uh, so you can really piece this thing together on your own. But I will say that the $250 price point of Z1 offers, it seems a little high and it doesn't seem like you get a whole lot for it. But that silicone tubing is really expensive, actually, you'd be surprised. Um, I think you can get nine foot lengths of it if you search Amazon, it's the same stuff, uh, but it's $100 or more. So that alone is, you know, 40% of the total price of Z1's kit. Uh, and then on top of that, they have that nicely designed and engineered and tested uh, plate with the collar built right in, so you just clamp it right up and, and it works. So the whole kit, the convenience of it, uh, the fact that it was you know, designed and engineered by Z1 Motorsports and tested on their track cars, their competition cars, there, there's a lot to be said about that. So I don't think the, the value is off. Now, they do say that they don't provide uh, the inlet ducts, and that's because this is sort of a universal kit, universal between the G37, 370Z, and the Q50. Um, and as you know, obviously, the front bumpers for each of those platforms is different, drastically so. Uh, so the f that's why they don't include that inlet duct, and that makes sense. Uh, there's no sense in creating three separate packages when essentially they're all the same except for those inlets. It gives you a little bit of freedom to determine which style you want. And even, even multiple people with a Q50 might find different locations to draw that air from. And it just kind of simplifies this package from Z1's perspective. And, and that makes total sense to me. And again, it keeps the price down and allows you to, to shop around and find the best deal for whatever inlet you want. So literally I've had stuff in a couple of shopping carts on a couple of different websites and I have the whole system pieced together. I just haven't pulled the trigger because I'm not really sure where I want to put that inlet duct and where I want to draw that cool air from. Uh, but that's that's why I said I'm a little bit disappointed or I was disappointed when I saw Z1 offered this. I, my heart kind of sank a little bit. I was like, no, damn it. Because I, you know, not a lot of Q50 guys are doing this and actually I haven't seen many 370Z or G37 guys doing it either. Uh, again, there's a ton of people on YouTube uh, creating their own brake cooling systems, uh, piecing their own parts together, which is totally cool. Uh, and I was going to go that route as well. Uh, I just hadn't done it yet. And then it's like, oh, Z1 announces this new product. I'm like, oh my God, dang it. Now everybody's going to do it uh, because the price point is good. Uh, it's a relatively simple installation and uh, it's really effective, especially for those of us that want to do some hardcore racing, autocrossing, track days, uh, your canyon carver, mountain runner, whatever. Um, you know, hit tail of the dragon a few times a year. This is going to go a long way in helping your car maintain its braking potential. Uh, I didn't mean to be all dramatic at the beginning of the video, but uh, I think it's a, it's a solid kit and I get, guess that gets us to the point where I recommend this or not, and I absolutely do. Those uh, engineered you know, plates that replace the, the dust shields on your rotors behind the hub there uh, with the collar built right in, for easy clamping of the tube, it directs the air uh, in the perfect location. There's no guessing, it's just right there. And, and it, it keeps everything nice and clean. And you saw the picture, it, lo it looks pretty sweet. And again, it's really effective. So uh, I do recommend the kit. If you don't wanna go that route, you can certainly piece your own things together. There are a couple of videos on YouTube that I would recommend. If I can remember, I'll put links in the description below to those videos, uh, but if you guys are you know, aggressive spirited drivers or you, you, you participate in, in uh, racing events, whatever they may be throughout the year, uh, this could be a, a really good upgrade for you. So I do recommend it. I'll put a link in the description to the Z1 uh, kit and, you know, reach out to them if you have any questions in terms of installation or, you know, what exactly is included in the kit. But it's pretty straightforward, pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I have a uh, bunch of installation videos 
uh, planned. I got a bunch of videos in general planned. So I'm not sure yet when I'll get to this and I really honestly haven't decided on you know, how I want to bring the air in. So I don't know that it's going to happen, you know, within the next month or two, but I think probably uh, before the end of the summer, I will have installed a brake cooling system one way or the other. Highly recommended uh, without even seeing it personally or holding it myself, uh, if you want to send me one, but uh, I just, I, you know, I, you can tell it's quality parts. You know, Z1 puts a lot of thought and uh, energy into their products and into their offerings. Um, so you know it's going to be good. We know it's functional. I think that's all I have to say. I think that's all I have to say. Good price point, good quality stuff. Uh, it looks cool. It functions really well. Should be, it's not going to be a super easy installation, uh, but it shouldn't be all that difficult. Uh, and there are a ton of options available in terms of those inlet ducts. So uh, just search around, see what you can find, take a look at your front bumper, see where you might be able to stick them in there and, and pull some of that air from the front end of the car. And uh, you'll be all set, you'll be good to go. You'll have a nicely cooled uh, front brake setup. So thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, leave a comment down in the comment section below if you've already installed um, this kit or kits like it. Let me know your thoughts about it. I appreciate the continued support that you guys are offering. I'm running up for, for Speed Culture Studios and I wish nothing but the best for you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Good things coming. Subscribe. Hit the bell. Thanks a lot. Peace.